Hey everybody, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be looking at this Nintendo Switch which has been sent in. And this console has been sent because it's been liquid damaged. Now, I know that people don't really like to see liquid damaged Nintendo Switches anymore. People find them boring, but I still enjoy working on them. So I thought I'd do a video because why not? So yeah, I thought it'd be interesting because liquid damage is pretty much different on every device, to be honest. And I do enjoy working on liquid damaged Nintendo Switches. So with that being said, if you are new to the channel and you like this type of content, I would really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and turn on the bell notifications. And that way you don't miss any future videos. And if you want to support me in any way, there's a Patreon link in the video description. Or you can check out the merch on the merch link in the video description. Or you can head over to Twitch and support me for free by linking a Amazon Prime account to Twitch and becoming a Twitch Prime subscriber. That way it doesn't cost you a penny, but it does really help me out. So with that being said, let's get into this repair. Right, we are then. So as you can see, this is a Nintendo Switch and apparently it's been water damaged. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up my USB and meter to this. And what that's going to do is it's going to tell me what's going on when the system attempts to charge. So basically what I want to do is I want to get a general idea of what kind of current is being drawn from the system. And that way then I can get a general idea of what's happening on the board itself. And that's without turning it on. A lot of people, they tend to say to me that I shouldn't be turning these on while they've been liquid damaged. But they get turned on anyway by another business that sends me these. And they also probably get turned on by the customer. So doesn't really make a difference so let's just see what's going on with the ammeter okay so we get 15 volts and um, that isn't detecting a battery by the look of it so it's jumping up to 0 0.05 amps so basically it's jumping up there and then it's dropping back down which means that it's not attempting to pass charge through to the battery now that could be one of several things. It could very well be the battery isn't plugged in or that the battery's gone into protection mode. So the battery does have a short circuit protection mode. Oh, hold on. Hmm. Okay, it's working that side. But as I was saying, it does have protection mode. And if it gets liquid damage, they do sometimes go into protection mode. Okay, now it's working that side as well, so that was in protection mode. So we still need to take it apart just to see what's going on. So let me just get the ticket off this. There we go. Don't want to dox my customers. So that battery probably was in protection mode, right? Because it took a little while for it to activate. So what I want to do first of all then is just open it up and just see what kind of liquid damage we're actually dealing with. So... It does look as though it's attempting to charge now, but we could still have some underlying liquid damage on the system. Not in the greatest of condition, if I'm being honest. So, screen protector's a bit smashed. The rails are scratched up to the max. And a lot of the time, we do end up with liquid damage on the rails as well. And it does look like that's the case. So it looks like we've got some corrosion there. I'll have a look under the microscope at those rails but it does look like we've got some corrosion on those so we might end up having to change those anyway depending on whether they clean up okay we do have a screw missing on the outer frame and one which doesn't want to come out I'll push that out in a minute it's fine that one's coming out okay so the reason I'm leaving this on charge as well is because I'm hoping that it's going to get some charge into the system just while I'm giving it a once over, basically. Okay, there we go. So right off the bat then, we've got some liquid damage down here. And this liquid damage here is the power circuit for the Joy-Con rail. So that would fall in line with the liquid damage on the Joy-Con rail itself. I can see some corrosion down there. So you can see that on the camera now I'm zoomed in. That side, not so much. That side's okay. It's probably still got a little bit of corrosion, but overall it seems okay. Let's just remove this thermal pad. 
and yep we do have some liquid damage around the battery circuit as well so what we need to do here is take this apart take out the board the only liquid damage I'm seeing so far is around here so it could be quite minor but we could also have some liquid damage on the other side and on the other side we've got some more power management for the Joy-Con rail but we've also got power management and power regulation in terms of the battery as well there's a little IC on the back a max 17050 and that's known as a fuel gauge IC which is what talks to the console and tells the console how much juice the battery's got hence the name fuel gauge and basically that becomes corroded a lot of the time when we end up with liquid damage around here so i'm expecting to see some around there as well but other than that this doesn't seem so bad so all that rambling i'm going to get this apart and i'm going to leave it on charge while i'm taking it apart and i'm also going to use another board a working board to charge the battery while i'm working on the board because I want the battery to be fully charged or at least charged enough to turn on and allow me to do some tests once I've done any rework that I can do on the board. So that's going to be the plan moving forward. If you're wondering what that is, that is the result of burning yourself with flux. So I don't recommend doing that. This is very dusty as well. Okay, so I'm going to get the foam off and the way I'm going to do that is to set my hot air at 160 degrees Celsius. Get rid of the dust at the same time, why not break that up. I'm just going to warm this up just enough so as it loosens off that adhesive. Isn't absolutely necessary but I do like to whenever possible. And then I should just be able to lift this off. Boom. Nice and clean. And there we go. So the board's out then. Or rather it's unscrewed enough to come out. So we'll remove that board. Excellent. And we also have some corrosion around here. Now I've just revealed that. So in terms of my battery then. I'm just going to drop a board inside this housing. And just plug it in. There we go. And there we go. So that's going to charge that battery for me. And save me a little bit of time later on down the line. So let's just give this a visual inspection then. Is that corrosion or is it just fluff? I'm not actually sure. It might be a bit of both to be honest. It looks like that's where water's came in from. Or liquid shouldn't say water because I don't actually know what it is it looks like that's where the liquid is coming from that's the max 77620A that's fine that's a big PWMIC backlight and uh, I think it's a Joy-Con power management IC uh, they are fine okay so the back seems fine so around here then we do have some very visible damage here to this battery management circuit and Joy-Con circuit we'll clean that up in a minute and just see how bad that actually is definitely got some corrosion around here I'll have a look inside the port in a minute the M92 area seems okay and yeah we do have some very very visible damage here so this is all corrosion around this chip this is another max IC the 77812 and this is the CPU power management IC I believe it's either CPU or RAM but I believe it's a CPU most of this if I'm being honest I'm going to say we're going to be able to fix just by reflowing it and cleaning it up because we do get a charging symbol so I don't think it's that bad in terms of damage All right, we've got the LCD driver that seems fine as well as the LCD ribbon connector 
Uh, yeah, I think it's just two main areas which we need to focus on. Let's have a look inside the port. Hmm, is that broken or just corroded? I'm not sure, to be honest. So I've got some IPA on a toothbrush. Let's just scrub inside there. And that seems okay now. Seems clean enough. Alright. So, the main thing I'm going to tackle here right now is going to be this area here. So, like I said, this is the... I've actually just realised that this is the HAD board. I did realise it just it didn't cross my mind with this chip. So, I think this PMIC is responsible for both RAM and CPU power. So, let's just give this a bit of a scrub here. Let's just see just how much damage we've actually got to the components. There's a little bit of charring on these capacitors. But honestly, I think a reflow would sort most of them out. That wouldn't, it wouldn't sort out charring. Uh, charring is because they've been short at one point. But I would say that just giving these a reflow is probably going to sort most of the corrosion out. And I don't think any of them are going to have contact issues. Yeah, they all feel fo uh, solid on the board. Usually, if we've got corrosion and we give them a little bit of a nudge, if they break off the board, then they're obviously weak. And that's usually how you can tell whether they're good or not. But I think, just given the fact that they're not breaking away, I think just break all of this corrosion up and then just give it a really good scrub. And then, in terms of corrosion underneath the IC, we can just reflow it using some flux and hot air. And that is generally going to fix most potential issues or most, most potential future issues. Just given the fact that it's just a little bit of corrosion. The flux generally tends to wash away the corrosion and fix any issues. So I'll just blow away this isopropyl alcohol. And yeah, judging by the look of that, I'm going to say that's going to be fine. So we'll just add some flux there. And then I'm just going to slowly heat this area up. I don't want to heat it up too quickly. So I'll start at a distance and just keep moving the hot air around just to get some heat into the board. I'll add some more flux. And I'm going to drop my airflow down to 40% now, and I'll go to 440 degrees Celsius. I was at 480, just for a quick reflow. Okay, that looks like it might still have some corrosion underneath. There we go. So notice how that moved a lot more freely the second time around. So the reason for that is because there was still a little bit of corrosion stuck underneath. So I went in for a second reflow just to make sure that it washes all of that out. And now I'll just let the board cool down for a little bit just before I use some isopropyl alcohol to clean up that flux. And I'm going to say that that's going to be absolutely fine in terms of functionality. I don't think those caps are a major issue being a little bit charred. They are or appear to be making a good contact they appear fairly solid same as the coils or inductors whatever you want to call them I think they're actually called inductors not coils but never mind uh, yeah so I think that's going to be fine while we're here might as well get rid of this thermal paste it's already making a mess all over the board and my table and let's move on to this area here now this area here you might see as a little bit of a problem the reason for that is going to be because we've obviously got plastic connectors around here. So we've got the battery connector, the speaker connector and the Joy-Con rail connector. So just because there's plastic connectors, first of all I'm going to clean up. But I'm not going to do any rework from this side of the board. 
So when I'm working on this area, I don't tend to do rework from this side. Okay, and that seems a little bit better. Let's just clean up around here as well. So this inductor here doesn't look great. As far as I can tell, it's functional. But it doesn't look fantastic. So yeah, I'm going to scrape it a little bit and just see how it looks in a minute. I'm thinking maybe maybe just take it off and hmm no it looks a little bit messed up I'm thinking replace it actually to be honest so I'm thinking replace that inductor and I don't think this is a major concern I think just a little bit of a reflow to break up any more corrosion that might be there but this area here this is a concern so can you see that there did you see that kind of move yeah so that's starting to move a little bit and that one is definitely gone that one is gone yeah so all of those are gone I've actually just scratched the board a little bit but that's fine I can fix that up so all of those caps are gone and the resistor as well how about that one that one's okay so that one's fine but these ones yeah they need sorting so I'll just clean that up I actually didn't scratch a board it's fine so we can see here that these are very visibly damaged and yeah they're gonna need sorting out so not only are the areas which we had components on damage so this one this one and this one but these points here as well are going to need cleaning up and this is going to need replacing as well so this probably doesn't need replacing but you can see here that's got pretty hot so even if that works I don't trust it so I'm going to be replacing that as well and the reason I said that I don't do any rework on the board is because or rather from this side of the board is because I don't want to damage the connectors so you might be wondering how I'm going to do it first of all I'm going to just tin this area. I'm going to clean this area up so as it's looking nice and fresh. So I'll grab some leaded solar. And just run my iron across. Try and bring these pads back. There we go, so a little bit of scraping with the iron. Same as those ones there. So that is just a continuous path with nothing connected. That's fine. But these ones I obviously want to make sure they're nice and clean. And the same with this here as well. So even though there's nothing connected here, I do want to just try and scrape it a little bit okay. that looks a mess at the minute don't worry that will clean up fine so yep that looks good I'm more than happy with that so the reason I've tinned these pads here even though there's no stuff is because I don't want it burning through and I don't want any corrosion what might what I might not be able to see straight away to eat through the board at a later date I don't want this coming back so basically take care of it now and it means less warranty jobs so the way that i'm actually going to work on this is right now as you can see i've got the board hanging over the edge of the table so you can see my fingers underneath hello so basically what i'm going to be doing is i'm just going to be heating up from underneath the board and that's going to reflow all of these don't don't nails look really dirty underneath the microscope oh well so I'm going to reflow from underneath and that's going to heat this area up and basically allow me to desolder this uh, or tra transistor voltage regulator, whatever the hell it is, I don't know. But it's going to allow me to desolder that without damaging the connectors. So that's what I'm going to do. 
So again, hot air at 440. And as you can see, I've got my nozzle here. That sounds really well, doesn't it? And just like that, it allows me to desolder this component without damaging that connector. And then I'm going to retin these pads here as well. And at the same time, add some flux to the rest of it. There we go. And so now it's time for me to just grab a donor board so as I can grab those components off. So I've got a donor board just here and we're going to need these three components plus that little voltage reg. So I'll grab those off one by one and then I'll drop them onto the board I'm working on. Again I'm going to be removing them from underneath because I don't want to damage the connector on the donor board either. Okay, so surface tension, I'll pull that in in a minute. And damn it. Oh, I've just messed up the connect. Uh, well, that was rather silly of me because the position I had the hot air gun in. I've just screwed up the connector. So I'm going to need to change the connector as well, which is really annoying. And that's my fault. Never mind. Good job I didn't melt the connector on the other one. Alright, let's just use a little bit of flux so I can get surface tension to pull that in. There we go. struggling a little bit with it balancing on the edge of the table if I'm being honest. It's not the easiest thing to do when you've got your arm floating in midair. And the fact I'm using my right arm for the tweezers and I'm left handed. So that resistor, for whatever reason, kept on tombstoning. So basically that means that it was just standing up on one side, which is really annoying when that happens. Add a little bit of flux there, and then I can tin those pads for that replacement connector, which was also super annoying, because that was completely my fault. But never mind. It's only one extra component.
Sorry, that capacitor was annoying me with the state of the solder. All right, so I'm going to remove the connector off the donor board. I won't bother moving the board again now. It's kind of pointless. Okay, so I've got the connector off the board. I'll pop it into line. Surface tension should take care of the rest. Okay, that's just dropped. And it's aligned itself, excellent. Let's move the heat away. Damn it. Oh, this is what happens when you've got your hand floating in midair. It just does not work. Give it a shake. So the reason I give it a shake is because that makes sure that the solder is actually bonding with the pin and the pad. And yes, it doesn't look pretty, but you know, without damaging the rest of the connectors, that's probably the best I'm going to be able to do in terms of getting them nicely aligned. So let's just change this then. So this inductor, I'm just not keen on how it looks on the one side. I can actually smell something sweet there as well. Okay, so there's our inductor. While we're there with some hot air, let's flow that again. And solder it. I say we solder, you know, soldering iron. Pretty cool, huh? No? Alright then. Alright, well there's a replacement inductor. Flow that on. Three, two, one. There we go. Cool. Happy days. Okay, there we go. Beautiful. So that should be good to go, technically. Let's just clean off the rest of this thermal paste here. We've got some thermal paste which has ended up over the back of the board. Which wouldn't hurt it, but I'd rather clean it. There we go. Damn it. Didn't want to lose that copper tape. But it does offer better cooling so I might as well just clean it all now all right so there's a couple of screws which I'm gonna put in before I actually test it and there is a pretty good reason for that and that's because there's certain screws that I can't really access easily when things like the game card reader is hooked up so there's those two screws there but at the same time I also want to protect the charger or rather the charge port so I'll screw that down alright let's screw in the game card reader as well because that's something that I've got to mess with to be able to test it so let's just secure that down and then the rest can pretty much wait. Alright, time for the moment of truth. Does it charge? Does it turn on? And does it work? Let's have a look. We get current draw. Blue screen. 
Oh dear. Oh dear me. That's not good. So a blue screen could be one of a few things. It could be corrosion on the RAM. It could be corrosion on the CPU. It could be damage to this chip. Ah, dear me. Right. Okay. Let's just take this shield off. That's been off before. So... Yeah. That came off too easily. That CPU shield has been off before. So I'm going to attempt to reflow that Max IC again and just see whether that makes any difference. So let's make sure we've got plenty of flux here. There we go. That was quick. Takes literally seconds on that IC. It's right on the edge of the board. It's not exactly a thin board. Oh, sorry, it's not exactly a thick board. Ow! The table's hot though. Alright, so basic test. Just backlight, LCD, battery. Oh. We have a charging symbol. Okay. Let's get it back together fully. So maybe it was just a case of that wasn't completely reflowed. So this is the problem with reflowing is it doesn't always go to plan. But that shield, I'm almost certain I heard a click when I was messing around earlier on. So the click has even to say, you know, it's clicked back down. So I think someone's had the shield off in the past. Whether he's had a reboard in the past, I don't know. Charging that side as well. Okay. Let's just put this shield back on. And that speaker's damaged. Just solder that back on. The wire had come loose. There we go. Let's pop some thermal paste on while we're waiting for it to charge up. So it's got a bit of charging, but not enough to boot up. And that's got CPU issues. Hmm. Unless something strange happened when I put the shield back on. Huh. Could it have just been that I... Accidentally shorted something? Maybe. Alright, well, let's just continue to put it back together for now. So at the minute, 
I mean, I have just put the shield back on. I could have accidentally shorted something out. Um, you know, touched the capacitor with the plate or anything like that. Um, anything could have happened. So let's just continue to put it back together. It's charging at 0.76 amps right now. There we go. So that seems perfectly fine to me. Okay, let's give it a few tests. So before I do that though, I do just need to clean up the Joy-Con rails. There was some corrosion in there. If I don't have to replace them, I'm not going to replace them because I don't want to charge a customer more than I need to. So just a bit of isopropyl alcohol with a toothbrush. And hopefully that's going to be good enough. There we go. Let's get some test joy cons. Hmm. So that joy con is connecting this one is not so I think it's probably going to need a new rail Just make sure it's connected properly okay let's try a new rail There we go. So there's a replacement rail. Set it to power on. Okay, seems to be pairing on fine now. I do have to reset my charger once I'm booting up because otherwise it'll just flash on and off. That's my charger though, it's not nothing to do with any switch. Yeah, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. All right, that is fantastic. Hmm, is that dock faulty? I do have some which I need to get round to trying to fix at some point. Okay, that is docking, but it is a bit dodgy. Yeah, so the the green light is coming on. So let me just show you what I mean. So can you see how the green light is coming on, but it's just dodgy. Um, so right now that light is on. If I move it, can you see it go off? So that charge port, when I thought it was a little bit rough, it probably is the charge port. But it does dock. Right, so it does dock, it does work, but it's just a little bit flimsy. So, one final primary test, and that is going to be to check it with the test game. And there you go, Cookie Mama. That's working fine. So, the charger port is probably going to need replacing, but because it is technically working, I need to confirm whether the customer is going to want to pay the bill. So I need to put it to the customer and find out whether they want to just leave it as it is or whether they want the charge port replacing or you know what the deal is with that. Uh, actually let's just try cleaning it really quickly. So a bit of IPI on my toothbrush. Oh, I just spilt it all over myself. Looks like I peed myself. Yeah, nothing new. So I'll just clean it out with uh, a little bit of IPA. I'm looking at my trousers, I've got a wet patch right in the wrong place. Oh well. That is better. 
That is better. It might just be that it's just, yeah. Okay, so I don't need to change the charge port. That's connecting every time now. Yeah. Cool. Don't need to change it. Happy days. Right, so it took a little bit to get there, but this console is now working. So the main issue with this, it was attempting to boot, but there was corrosion around the PMIC for the CPU and RAM, and also the PMIC, or the battery management IC, sorry, and the Joy-Con rail. So it's needed a little bit of a clean up, a couple of components around the Joy-Con rail have needed replacing. There's that transistor slash voltage regulator, a couple of capacitors and a resistor, and then just a reflow on the PMIC for the RAM and CPU. But then, as you saw, that did cause a blue light of, a uh, blue screen of death. Sorry, not a blue light of death. It caused a blue screen of death. And that I can only put down to a little bit more corrosion being there and not cleaning itself out properly. But another reflow and it's working absolutely fine. Um, I will give this an extended test. But obviously, you know, as it stands right now, this console is working absolutely fine. It's charging, it's docking, it's playing a game. It's connecting Joy-Cons now. I've replaced that Joy-Con rail. And uh, yeah, everything else seems to be working absolutely fine. So I'm happy. And uh, hopefully the customer will be too. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you do have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section down below. I do enjoy reading people's comments and seeing what people have to say. And if you do want to organise a repair, then get me in touch using the website in the video description. Consultfix.co.uk. You can book in the repair or you can contact me if you've got any questions about the repair. So... Other than that, if you do want to support the channel, then you can do so by heading over to Twitch and becoming a Twitch Prime subscriber. Absolutely free for you to do, but it does massively help me out. It gives me around about $2.50 for every person that does it. And yeah, it's a massive, massive help to the channel. You can also become a Patreon sponsor using the Patreon link in the video description, or you can become a channel member using the join button below the video as well. And that all massively helps out the channel. So that's going to be it for now. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you later. Bye for now.